and action. Catherine had a question about compensation. We're going to talk about two types. Uh, this is usually the reason why people go off their diets or they plateau. The first is compensatory behavior. And it's a phenomenon where if you work out really aggressively or if you finish or complete a 5K, if you make it to the top of the mud run, if you hit max when you're doing your lift, cool. But then if you are saying, you know what, I deserve this, I'm going to go out and have a cheesecake now. I'm going to go out and have five beers because I haven't had it in a while and I think I've burned up enough calories to compensate. Well, that's not thinking properly and that will uh, sometimes one episode of that in a week will set you back a couple pounds. I know we're talking about a couple pounds but it's almost like trying to quit tobacco. If you stop tobacco you've got the chemical out of you, you have another good behavior that you're taking part in and suddenly you say well I'm gonna have a pack of cigarettes this weekend because it's 4th of July. You know that's not good, but it, uh, it puts you back into that dynamic of giving in and the brain thought of, well, I did it before, I'm just going to do it. So it's not a good thinking pattern. Uh, it could be in an episode of weakness, of uh, fatigue, of sorrow. So you have to be careful. And that's why it's always really good to be accountable to somebody else. If you work out with a buddy, then you know that buddy, it'll, if you, one of you is tempted, the other one usually say no. And then that's it. End of story. If you're by yourself, it's easy to talk yourself into it. So if you don't have a coach, another good reason for a coach, another good reason for a weekly weigh-in at Weight Watchers, another good reason for a meeting of some sort, a group meeting always encourages the week, gets the speed of the group going, competition. So these are all positive feedback. The negative feedback is when you entertain poor sleep, you don't have a mindful practice, you, uh, at the times when you're most vulnerable, on the weekend night, uh, when there's a party going on, again, when you haven't slept properly, those are the times that you just say, you know what, I'm going to, you go ahead and plan. After workout, you just go ahead and beeline straight to home, shower, go to sleep. Or you go ahead and fill up with good foods if you think you're going to be tempted. Fill up with good foods, high fiber, high protein, a little bit of good fat. And then hopefully if you do get exposed, the brain thought will be out the window. Even if you're hungry or you say, I'm going to do it. If you filled up with that good stuff I just mentioned to give you satiety, there's no room for the crappy stuff. So watch yourself with compensatory behavior. It can happen to all the best of us. Um, the other thing is metabolic compensation. So when the body uh, goes through, well, let's look at it this way. The body has something called a basal metabolic rate. So it's the basal calculation for, uh, to forget the, all the activities you go through, the basic amount of energy that the body needs to maintain respirations, maintain digestion, maintain hormone secretion, and uh, think or process on an average. And if you calculate the basal metabolic rate, that's the amount of calories that you have to at least have to squeak by every day. And sometimes that can change depending on your exertion, depending on your stress level, depending on time of year, the food you're digesting, if there's alcohol involved, if there's an irritant. So basic metabolic rate can always change, but if you lower your food intake and you keep your basic metabolic rate where it was, then eventually you end up burning fat sources because you don't have enough fuel going in. And that's great. But sometimes what happens with some folks your basal metabolic rate falls. That's a compensatory metabolic compensation when your basal metabolic rate falls. Even if you've lowered your fat intake, your calorie intake, your carbohydrate intake, and suddenly that tight diet you're, you were uh, starting with is not gaining any further loss. I should say you're not losing any further pounds. And when that happens, you sometimes have to shock the system with either reformulating the diet again so that you go lower which could be a formula for disaster if you keep on going lower and lower and lower, and not good. Sometimes if you just change up your exercise. Sometimes if you just try a different nutrition practice of some sort. If you do a different detox. If you get stimulated by diet pills, or CLA, or Laura, or Gymnema Silvestri, Garcinia Cambogia, all these things sometimes 
jumpstart your basal metabolic rate to either climb again while you keep stable or it stays there that's fine but you have to reformulate this so uh, your amount of calories necessary isn't as much as it was before and you can get by without getting sick or injured so whatever the reason when you have the metabolic compensation you might have to readjust for a short time I usually say it takes about three weeks to reset it but whatever you do again if you are accountable to somebody else do you have a coach in your corner you have a nutrition coach in your corner cool if you have a meditative coach in your corner psychologist or counselor cool if you have an exercise coach in your corner physical therapist then you can always bounce it off of one of these three to reset your base of metabolic rate and hopefully you don't uh, that metabolic compensation go back goes back up again and then you can still get by with the amount of calories you're doing and the amount of exercise you're doing but you reset that thing so those are the two big reasons so Catherine hopefully we can get past by either shocking the system, redesigning the exercise, trying to de dive deeper into mindful practice, maybe switching around the calories, or we just embrace ourselves to not fall into that spiral of trying to cut back because we are tired. Taking a break is okay, but if we're on a roll, I'd say let's refocus, redesign our next summit, and then hit it again. So we take advantage of the summer. So during the winter time and fall, we can kind of just cruise through fall, winter, come out during spring and do it again in a different pattern. So good question, Catherine.